This tutorial is applicable for almost all PC and laptop. We will show you how to use SSD and HDD at the same time, but it's also applicable if you just want to upgrade HDD to SSD. In this video, I will use KD on a laptop, but I will also show you how to do it on a PC. Don't worry, it's really easy and the risk is low. Video timeline is on the description so you can skip to the part you want to know. This tutorial is applicable for all PCs and laptops that use HDD with SATA cable. And for your info, the majority of PCs and laptops that released on 2009 until today use SATA cables. This is a SATA connector. If you're HDD using this kind of connector, then it means you can use this tutorial. It doesn't matter if it's SATA 1, SATA 2, or SATA 3 as long as it's a SATA. Just for note, if your devices only support SATA 1, then you install SSD that supports SATA 3, then the speed will only be at SATA 1 rate and vice versa. Just for info, this is an IDE cable for older PC. If your PC still use this kind of cable, then you cannot do this tutorial. Basically, to upgrade HDD to SSD, it requires three steps only. First, clone or copy the operating system from HDD to SSD. Second, install the SSD on device. Third, just do a minor setting so the device will boot from SSD. Really easy. Some of SSD's type. The common one is 2.5 inch SSD. Its size is about the same as 2.5 inch HDD with a width of around 7 cm. There is M SATA SSD which is smaller than a 2.5 inch SSD. There is M2 form factor SSD, a M2 SATA NVMe SSD which is faster than basic M2 SATA, and PCIe SSD which is usually for gaming devices. Actually, there is also SSHD which combine SSD and HDD technology, but we will not talk about that here. Which one should we buy? It's dependent on your laptop or PC. Just check your device specification which type of SSD that is supported by your devices. One thing for sure, if your HDD size is 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch and use a SATA cable, then you definitely can use a 2.5 inch SSD for upgrade. If it's not written in the specification, just open your laptop or PC cover, then look for the SSD slot. Is there any of it or not? If there isn't, then just buy a 2.5 inch SSD. And secondly, buy an SSD with enough capacity. We will talk about how big is enough later. Step 1. Clone the operating system. Always unplug the electronic cord before opening PC or laptop cover. Remove the laptop battery if it's removable. For the PC users, plug the SATA cable into the SSD, then to the motherboard. Usually, there are more than one SATA port on motherboard. Plug it on the fastest SATA port. Read it on your motherboard manual which one is the fastest. But usually, all the ports have same speed. Don't forget to also plug the power cable to the SSD. For laptop users, open the back cover, then check if there is a dedicated SSD slot. If you can find it, then just plug the new SSD on that slot. If your laptop doesn't have a CD room and also there is no dedicated SSD slot, that means you cannot use SSD and HDD at the same time. If you want to upgrade from HDD to SSD, you need to buy a 2.5 inch external SSD or HDD case. Insert the new SSD to the external case, then connect it to the laptop so we can copy the operating system. In this video, I use a 15 inch Lenovo IdeaPad 310 laptop with a KD method, so it will hybrid using SSD and SDD at the same time. The function of KD is to put SSD or SDD in the CD ROM slot. There are two sizes of KD, which is 9.5mm and 12.7mm. To know which one to buy, you need to remove the CD ROM first. If your laptop is Lenovo, press the FN button, then S, then V in sequence. This will disconnect the battery and the laptop will not turn on when the power button is pressed. To turn it back on later, connect the charger. To remove the CD-ROM, you just need to open this one screw. After that, pull the CD-ROM out. Use a ruler to measure the thickness. If it's below 1cm, buy a 9.5mm KD. If above 1cm, buy the 12.7mm KD. Install the new SSD in a KD. We remove this part, then install it on KD. Then insert KD to the CD-ROM slot. Turn on the PC or laptop. The new SSD will not be detected in my computer because it has not been formatted. 
Press the window key plus R to open run menu. Then type thismgmt.msc to open this management. You need to initialize the SSD disk first. If it appears like this, select GPT-10 OK. If it doesn't appear, look at the bottom and locate the SSD disk. You can see from its capacity or the unallocated. Right click, then select initialize disk. If there is no initialize disk option, look for convert to GPT disk. Select GPT then OK. After that, restart the device. Clone operating system, we can use Macrium Reflect. It's free. Link is in video description. Choose home use. Enter your email. Open email to get the download link. We open the Macrium Reflect app. Locate the disk where Windows is installed. You can identify it from the name, capacity, or drive letter. After that, select clone this disk. Click select a disk to clone to. Then select your SSD. It can be identified from the name and capacity. We need to copy an existing operating system drive. Usually it's drive C. If you use hybrid system, you don't need to copy the other drive such as drive D, E, or others. To copy, just left click and hold then drag it. Before you buy an SSD, make sure it has enough capacity to store at least the entire operating system file, the one with Windows icon. It is also recommended to copy the disk partition with no drive letter if there is any. This is usually the laptop recovery file from manufacturer. If there is a space left on the new SSD, it will become a new drive partition. If you don't want to create a new partition, click Clone Partition Properties, then click Maximum Size, OK. After that, click Next several times, then click Finish. We don't have to check Save Backup. Click OK to start the cloning process. The process will take time depending on HDD and SSD speed and the number of files. When finished, we open My Computer, we will find two drives that have same contents. In this video, the F drive which is the SSD is a clone of C drive which is the HDD. To prevent mistake, we open C drive then create a new folder called this is an old HDD or something. After that, turn off the PC or laptop. The next step is we should install the SSD on the fastest port. In my case, I should install SSD in the place where SDD installed before. Open the HDD cover. Remove the HDD. Remove the plastic holder. Some laptops use both so pay attention to it. If you are a PC user, usually you don't have to change the HDD and SDD position as most of nowadays motherboard SATA port has same speed. Then we remove the KD, remove the SSD, we install SDD on KD, screw the bolt, put back KD in. Screw the bolt, install the plastic cover on SSD, install it on laptops. Close the cover. The next step is BIOS setup. Different brand might have different way for entering BIOS, just google it. On my Lenovo IdeaPad, after I press the power button, I press the FN plus F2 button. For PC user, usually you need to press Dell or Delete key or F2 key. The BIOS display can also be fairy. We need to set it so that the first boot is from SSD. We go to the boot section. You can see that the first boot position is still a Toshiba HDD even though we already switched the SDD and SSD hardware position. We need to put the SSD to be the first one. Just read the instruction. For example, I need to press Fn plus F6 to move it up. Exit and save by pressing Fn plus F10. Select yes, laptops will restart and then enter windows. Currently are already booted from SSD because it feels much faster than way before. To make sure, we open my computer. The OS is in drive C as you can see the windows logo. We open it and we cannot find the folder that we created earlier. Now we open E drive and we can find the old HDD folder that we created earlier in HDD. This means we have successfully moved the OS to SSD and boot using SSD. Just to make sure, press Windows plus R, 
type this mgmt.msg to open this management, you can see that the C drive is on this zero, which is the SSD, while drive E is on this one, which is the HDD. After that, you can format the E drive, which contain the old OS if you want. For the laptop CD-ROM, you can buy a mini SATA cable so you can use it as external CD or DVD-ROM by using a USB port. I hope this video useful for someone and thanks for watching.